How do you know if it is God's will or if it is your will? This is something I get asked all the time, especially by people in early recovery, and I wanted to come on here and give you my three pieces of practical advice to figure it out. Hi, I'm Kirsten Johnson. Welcome back to my subscribers. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications of upcoming videos. There was a phrase that I said in my early recovery all the time. It was just, I kept saying it left and right because I was developing my faith. I came from zero faith, just about. I was under the idea that I needed to develop this faith in order to not only help me with my anxiety and help me with my emotions, but most importantly, to give me a chance at not dying from alcohol, for having the power to not have to drink again. And so I got interested in faith, even though I was resistant and it was like, okay, well, how do I know what God's will is though? How do I, if I'm gonna seek God's will for me, how do I know if it's God's will or if it's my will? And so there was a, there was a sentence that I said all the time in the early recovery, which is this one. Is it odd? Or is it God? One of my sober friends made me this shirt. So yeah, is it odd or is it God? And so coincidences, that would, I kind of felt like whenever there was one of those weird serendipities or coincidences, like that's what I would say, is it odd or is it God? And so yes, it's odd, not sure on the God thing. If you want to develop a stronger relationship with your higher power or you want to begin your relationship with a higher power, click up here to watch my video with my tips on how to. Again, I am not any, uh, authority on God, obviously, or in developing a relationship with God or knowing what God's will is against your will. But I can tell you what has worked for me in deciphering that in my own life. Sometimes it can get confusing and it has looked silly when I thought I was convinced on God's will. Like I remember, I don't know, maybe it was seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, so more the beginning of my recovery, praying for boyfriends and God, where is my boyfriend? Who do you want me to date, God? Please show me my boyfriend. And then I go to um, a recovery meeting and some guy is there, he's new in town and he was really cute guy and he had the same sobriety date as me. And I, in my head, I was like, this is clearly God's will for me. <laughs> clearly, it's the same sobriety date. Um, no, no, it was not God's will for me, it was not. <laughs> So it might be confusing um, and you know there were other men that I also thought their name must be God's will and it was not and other jobs I thought that the company's name must be God's will and it wasn't and so how do you find out what God's will is and why would you even care what God's will is? What I found is is being in the mystery of life flowing as a mystic uh, surrendering to God has been quite the journey quite the ride and it has led me to live a life literally beyond my wildest dreams beyond meaning there was no way I could have imagined that my life would be and get as good as it has gotten without faith, without surrendering to God and to God's plan for me, uh, my conception of a higher power. Why would you wanna have faith? Uh, because first of all, it's like the best ride in town. <laughs> you don't know what's happening and the ability to let go is a wonderful thing. But if you are here because you want to know how to decipher what is your will to God's will, these are the three things I'm gonna recommend. Number one, take action. Otherwise, it's all in our head. And so take action on what you believe God's will is. So if you have an idea, you have an intuition, you pray for a boyfriend and the guy there has the same sobriety day as you and it feels like it's God's will, then ask him out like I did. Go on some dates like I did and then you find out that it's not God's will and that's okay too. But take action, bumble and stumble forward as you get an idea for it and then you move into it. The way that I look at life is I can ask for anything once, I can ask for it a second time just for clarity and if I'm asking for something a third time or trying to get my way, my will, by going three times into something, it could be, that could be curse, certainly be cursed as well. And so that's a good indicator to me about like when I'm engaging with a human, ask him once, ask him twice, third time is now I'm trying to control somebody. I'm no longer in thy plan, I'm in my plan. And there's nothing wrong with being in my plan, especially for the entrepreneurs watching and people with side hustles or full on businesses, there is a lot of that hustling and moving forward and getting rejected and showing up again anyway, um, putting yourself out there into the world. So this is a little bit different as far as surrendering to thy will. One thing I want to say about that, I didn't know I was going to share this with you. I do live my life as a surrender to God, as my idea of a surrender to God. And so the business that I am in is a surrender to God. I got that idea for the business through meditation and through taking action on that meditation. So even when I hit resistance, either my own or I get rejected in the external world, I keep showing up because I, I'm clear that is thy will for me. That is what I'm born for. That is when my spirit is illuminated. That is who I am um, as the child of God that I am. I don't know, is any of this making sense to you? If this makes sense to you, write it in the comments. Yes, I'm good. I'm good with God. I got God's will for me. I am living, I'm living in the divine plan for me. So if you know what I'm saying, drop it down there. If I'm offending you, welcome to the party. I was so offended by the word God for a good, 
I don't know, first year of my recovery, I think? For a while, for a while. Number two is God's billboard. So God's billboard is not on the side of the road. Some of us think, I think, you know, the side of the road is gonna say, this is your boyfriend, this is your job, leave this friendship, move to this city or whatever, that somewhere outside of us, that there is gonna be this illuminated sign telling you what to do. My conception of God is that it's the great reality deep within, meaning that God's billboard is here, it's the gut, it's the intuitive sense, it's the intuition, so this would be Kirsten's will, and this would be where God's will is coming from. So when I quiet this guy up, I get a chance to listen to the, the deeper wisdom from inside. And so meditation is great for that. Something like quieting everything down and tuning in and listening to God. And for those of us in recovery, it could take a while to really decipher this. At least it did for me because I was so used to numbing out my internal world, desensitizing myself through alcohol um, or whatever, watching reality TV shows that triggered the F out of me. So I'm having this chaos and Internally all the time or chronically showing up late places so I have this adrenaline running through me or being addicted to excitement so I have this adrenaline inside me so I'm like not tuned into myself and so getting sober and then shedding the secondary addictions help me tune in to the greater wisdom deep inside it's hard to hear that slow quiet voice when there's so much noise up here and so if you're not already meditating it's a beautiful practice if you're meditating write it in the comments I'm a meditator. How many minutes do you meditate? If you meditate every day, how many minutes do you meditate? Let me know. I started off with two minutes a day, so I don't know if you're like a two minutes a day person, like on most days you meditate for two minutes. I'm now, for some reason, I really like 11, so I meditate for 11 minutes uh, most mornings. Some mornings if I'm busy, I'll do five or seven minutes, or I'll do 20 if I have more time, but I love 11 minutes. Number three is what I call the godgasm. So it is uh, what my Australian friends call the goosies. Uh, there's, I'm in Bali, and so Australia is not too far. A lot of people that I'm friends with here are Australian, so they call it the goosies, or you might call it the goosebumps, depending upon where in the world you live. I call it the godgasm, which is when you get, the body gets flooded with the chills. And what does that mean for you? For me, it means the truth. Like I'm in alignment with the truth, with my truth. I'm in, God, I'm in God's will. That's how I know I'm in God's will because I get the full body chills. So I know I'm in alignment, and that happens sometimes in conversation with people. It's already happened a couple of times in the video, it's happening right now, like I know that I'm in alignment with my truth, with thy truth, right? And so when I say alignment with my truth, I don't mean the ultimate truth of the world, I mean the truth for me in the moment. So my truth isn't your truth, isn't someone else's truth, it's not the ultimate truth, but it's that I'm in alignment with, with my highest good, with the truth. So this can happen for me, and it didn't happen for the first couple years of my sobriety, I've gotten more sensitive over the years, but I'll have a thought, and then I'll get the chills. Or I'll have another thought and I won't get them. So I'll know through even just having thoughts. Like if someone asks me a question and I have a thought, I'll know, I'll know what's in alignment with my truth. I'll know what God's will is for me, how I interpret that, right? The story that I make is that that means it's God's will for me. So I'll know if I'm in God's will or not because of what my body's reaction is. My, I'll get a physical response. So the Godgasm. The goosies. Is there any other way that you know that you are in God's will other than in your own will, my will versus thy will? Share it in the comments. We do this together, the whole sober recovery journey, and I'm making this whole sober series for you and any of your friends, so make sure you send this video to your friends who are also sober or in recovery. Um, and then definitely write into the comments about how you know you're in God's will. This is a question I get asked all the time, and I think as much feedback as we can have to open this conversation up, I think it'd be really valuable. And if you're still not convinced or sure based on what I said, read the comments and see what the other people who watched this video wrote about um, their interpretation of God's will and how they know they're living thy plan, th thy ultimate plan, which for me, it's the plan we're born for. When we're living in God's will, it's, it's what I'm actually born for. Not what I think I need, not me trying to prove my worthiness or my own lovability or that I'm good enough, but knowing that I'm good enough and knowing from a place of worth and lovability that I'm an ex my natural expression in the world. I mean, I don't know how that could not be God's will for me, is to me be a fully expressed soul inside of a body. Fully expressed, expanded. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, liked it, subscribe to my channel, and definitely share it with your buddies who are also sober. All right, guys, is it odd or is it God? <laughs>